Hi, welcome to the show. As you can see, me bud isn't here today. Maggie, however, is exactly where she's supposed to be, and I just ask that you keep her in prayer. She's, you know, she's got a large family, and a lot of them are getting older, and um, she has her uh, brother-in-law, Rufus Keith, who had a stroke. Please keep him in prayer. And specifically today, her precious, precious niece, Ariana, uh, ordained lover of God, uh, is in the hospital getting surgery for melanoma on the back of her head. Please keep her in prayer. Um, you know, when I when I heard about that, I decided to go online and just look up melanoma. You know, it's one of the deadliest cancers. And most folk think it's just white folk that uh, get melanoma, but that's not true. I saw, I read an article from the, I think it's the National Cancer Institute that said um, that although whites certainly get more skin cancers and melanoma than do Afro-Americans, when blacks get it, it they when they find it, it's usually in a latter stage, which is not good. And then surprisingly, at least I didn't know this information, is uh, on uh, blacks, when they get it, it's most often on their palm, on the bottom of their feet or under their fingernails. Whereas with whites, it's on their uh, legs, usually, not exclusively, or on their trunk. In other words, anything that doesn't have something hanging off of it, you know, arms, legs. And uh, so I just want to encourage you, uh, go have yourself checked every single year. I have Tom and I, I just call my primary, say we need to have our yearly exam. She writes us a referral to uh, dermatology, and we go and we do the whole strip scan, if you will. And for those that are local, let me humbly suggest that we go to Nerman, uh, Noonan Dermatology. And... Uh, first time I went, I saw a doctor and, you know, I, the, the exam was okay. But next time I went, I saw the PA, the physician's assistant. Her name is Sandy. She is fabulous. Everybody literally without exception that I know that goes there, see Sandy because she's so good. She's fun, but also she does, um, uh, a flawless exam. She even parts your hair goes down and parts your hair and uh, caught a skin cancer on my husband on the top of his head. So it's really, really important that you get yourself examined. And by the way, I'm going to try and say this delicately. When I went last time, she wanted to check a spot. How does one say that uh, I thought the sun never hit there? And she said that they are now finding melanomas in that uh, uh, fragile spot. So get yourself checked because I doubt very seriously any of us check there for skin cancers or melanoma or the bottom of our feet. You know, usually a, a skin cancer, um, it's by sight. You know, it, it, sometimes it'll itch, but not necessarily. So if it's someplace you can't see, you need to have somebody check it out. And why am I making such a big point of this? Because you and I that love God uh, are the temples of his Holy Spirit. And the only way he can flow in a particular way is through us. He can flow through everybody else, yes. But the only way he can flow uh, in a certain way through Linda is if Linda's there. The only way he can flow a certain way through you is if you're there. So we need to take care of these bodies as best we know. Um, and then let God do the rest. Um, I received a couple phone calls that I wanted to mention. One uh, precious, precious uh, fellow named uh, Charles Burke, and he has a wife, Shirley May, that has had a stroke. And please pray for her. This man is just the, the nicest, nicest person, and he obviously loves his wife. So saints, go to work, pray, and let's believe that God's going to do something above and beyond, which he loves to do. There was another phone call that I got, and I don't want to mention the person's name because I certainly didn't ask him if I could, but I thought this was something I needed to mention. Um, he called and asked about something, a, per, uh, a certain thing, and he asked what I thought, and I said, well, uh, this, but that, and he said, did I blaspheme the Holy Spirit? And I said, do you love God with all your heart? 
And he said, yes. I said, do you do everything you can to please him? He said, yes. I said, then the chances are slim to none that you blasphemed the Holy Spirit. Might have said something stupid, but not blaspheme the Holy Spirit. And I said, you know, I live in peace by knowing, and I teasingly say this, so don't be offended, that God is that divine pooper scooper, that I love him, I have a passion for him, I want to please him more than the breath of my body, but it doesn't mean I don't do some stupid stuff. But because he always just looks at the heart, remember, when he sees my heart condition that I love him, that I mean well, that I want to please him, and I do something stupid, it's like he's behind me with a dust broom, you know, and, and just cleans it up and starts me off fresh and new. So um, if you love God with all your heart and you truly want to please him, you're committed to him, slim to none that you're going to blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Having said that, there are some areas where I think we need to be very, very careful. Um, I teasingly say, God ain't been acting right these past decades. Uh, by the Holy Spirit, he's been doing some things that we haven't seen in the past. Uh, some things we saw in the first century, but we haven't seen in ages. And the established church has been very quick to condemn it and very quick to say, that thing's not God, that's the enemy. Very dangerous. What am I talking about? Well, it first started out with tongues. When I was young, none of your business whim, uh, I remember that there was a church, you know, several miles from our house, and they were called Holy Rollers, and they were talking in this, and everybody mocked dangerous territory. Now, I think back then it was possible that God might have offered mercy because of ignorance. We just didn't hear about that thing. If you were mainline especially, you just didn't hear about it. And a mainline usually meant you had to be dignified. So there was a form of ignorance, although the people perish because of lack of knowledge. So I don't want to make light of that. I'm just saying that hopefully... There was some mercy because of ignorance. But today, there's no excuse. Uh, you can't use ignorance as excuse because if you're alive and breathing and you're in the church, you know there are things going on other than what has gone on in the mainline churches. And it started out, and I'm going to take a stab at it, back in the 60s and 70s with the Catholic Charismatic Renewal. Actually, started back in the 1900s with the Zeusa Street and the Welsh Revival and all that. But it came to the forefront in America, where everybody knew about it, in the 60s and 70s with the Catholic Charismatic Renewal. And there was a lot of mocking and a lot of that thing can't be God. That's got to be the enemy. Such dangerous territory. And then we, uh, Holy Spirit stepped it up a notch and we had the falling out in the spirit. That did it for a lot of folk. They show enough being affected by the devil and they going to hell, I'm telling you. That's how some church folks saw it, because it was totally out of their realm of knowledge, their realm of experience. Uh, again, dangerous territory. Do I want to say they blasphemed the Holy Spirit? I'll leave that in God's hands, but I'm telling you, dangerous territory. And then the last one that I can think of was the laughing um, and even I had to sneak off to a couple places where I understood that the spirit was moving in that way. And it was, how can I say, it was outside of my comfort level. I'm fessing up, but in no way did I ever say, this thing isn't God. I watched it. Um, it was real. I had no doubt that this was God doing something, but it wasn't something that was in my comfort level at that time. Um, lots and lots of folks in the church said that thing is not God. It's the devil doing that thing. They've stepped outside of this boundary or that boundary. Be careful. Be careful. God gives us the Holy Spirit. And when we are baptized in the Holy Spirit specifically, there is, and I know the theologians can dicker over this thing. When we're born again, do we have the Holy Spirit? Yes. But 
there's a different dimension of him. And I'm going to put it that way. When we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, there is a manifestation of his, um, of who he is, his activities inside of us, beating around that bush to say that with the infilling of the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, and I won't go down, but as best I know, with the evidence comes discernment. Those gifts are just activated, and one of them is discernment. And so the Holy Spirit allows you to discern if something's God or something isn't, including if it's outside your comfort level. And the laughter was outside my comfort level. But I could discern very easily that it was a thing of God. So I don't know where else God's going to take us. I don't know where else the Holy Spirit uh, is going to take us and what kinds of things he's going to do. But be very, very careful um, how you judge what's going on within the body of Christ and ask the Father in the name of Jesus to baptize you in the Holy Spirit so that you have that activated discernment to be able to tell what is God and what is not. And believe you me, I am not afraid of the Holy Spirit telling me that thing isn't God and I turn and run. I have no problem with that. Um, but the discernment is what tells you, is this thing God or is this thing not God? So get baptized in the Holy Spirit. And by the way, you don't have to go any place to receive that infilling. Uh, the testimonies that bring me some of the greatest joy are those that were in their bedroom alone. Nobody was there. It wasn't any, any, um, uh, international or naturally known, nationally known uh, preacher that laid hands on them and rock a them this way and shunned a lot that way. No, they were just in their bedroom and they cried out to God Almighty and boom, he did it. And I love that because only he gets the credit for it. Of course, one of my all-time favorites was uh, years and years ago, none of your business, uh, we were living with a pilot. Tom had just received his wings and we were staying with him for a little while until we could get in a house. And uh, he was a lieutenant commander, and he told us that the first time he was landing an airplane on an aircraft carrier and saw that postage stamp coming up on him, and it was doing this, and there probably winds and everything else, and it was a life or death thing, uh, he opened his mouth, and out of his mouth came a prayer language. I love it. I love it. Because... Um, he didn't even know the theology of it. He was just opening his mouth to cry out to God to say, help. And there was Abba Father with the, through Jesus and baptized him in the power of the Holy Spirit. So just ask and you shall receive. It is a good gift from God. All right, go get yourself some tea. Remember, it's power packed with antioxidants. This is the temple. We want to keep it strong. And I'll be back in just a second. I was born and raised in the big house, you know, a breeder kennel. My life was a cage in concrete floors until I was rescued and given a good home. Now I'm so happy, I'm loved and cared for, but it's really hard for me to be happy when I know thousands of others are still in prison facing an uncertain fate. What's happened? Hey, how's it going? If you think you can find a place in your heart and home for one of my less fortunate friends, 
please, please visit your local rescue group or animal shelter today. Thank you! Hey, welcome back to the show. And remember, keep Maggie in prayer and her um, uh, brother-in-law, Rufus Keith, who had a stroke, and her precious, precious niece, uh, Ariana, uh, who's going through that surgery right now for melanoma, and we're expecting a great report. And I want to get back to her, and I hope I have some time, but I've got a couple announcements I want to make. Uh, finally have some places in town that are carrying my books. One is Noonan Health Mart. Uh, they are a new pharmacy located um, on the corner of Baker Road and Bullsboro, right across from CVS and on Sullivan Road. Um, they're right. They're in the same strip area that has uh, the Noonan Pet Center, I think it is. And y'all have got to go there. They are the nicest, nicest people ever. They're from South Africa, and uh, they. I'm telling you, I watched some folks come in, uh, you know, filling uh, prescriptions. They came in, they dropped them off, and in three minutes they were out of there. I mean, it was wonderful, and you can park right up front. I uh, had been getting my uh, prescriptions at uh, filled at Target. And uh, the people were nice there, but boy, I had to park out in West Egypt, and then I had to wait. Uh, it didn't take them three minutes to fill it, I'll tell you that. Uh, and now, I mean, this is just great, because time, time's money, you know? And you can pull right up front, go in there, and uh, get it done in a heartbeat. And like I said, they are just the nicest, nicest people. Uh, take the time to talk to you. Um, great senses of humor. And they have set up a book a book section for local authors. Not all of them are Christian, but we got a lot of Christian books there. Swanee Ballman's books are there, and you know how I love Swanee's books. And, uh, and my books are there, both of them. Uh, Life Within the Veil, Life Within the Veil, and 40 Days of Healing Devotions. And I keep telling you, when you know somebody that's sick, give them something that means something and will last. Flowers are pretty, but they're expensive. Cards aren't cheap anymore. This is something they can read a, a, a devotion every day and get God's word in them for healing. So that's at the Noonan Health Club, uh, Health Mart, uh, corner of Bullsboro and Baker Road. And then, and I'm so excited, we've got a Christian bookstore back here in town. And I think uh, some of you uh, that are local may have seen it in the local paper, although I realize a lot of people don't get the paper. And it was Patrick Mims and uh, Susan Boyd. They're um, good friends and uh, partners. And God told them to open this bookstore in the Old Scott's bookstore. And there's a real miracle story behind it. Other people had called Miss Scott to put businesses in there, but... Uh, when uh, Susan called her, Ms. Scott said, uh, I've been waiting for your call because she wanted a bookstore in there and how wonderful that it's a Christian bookstore. And these two are just the greatest folk. Um, I'm especially impressed two things. One, they didn't uh, go out and buy, you know, $3 million worth of books and put themselves in debt. They have put plenty of books in there and they're going to build and we need to help them build. Uh, secondly, they want the store to be more of a ministry than just a store. And that excites me. Um, and, and in, in light of that, I'm going to be teaching a leadership training class beginning October the 12th. That's a Saturday, starting at 10 o'clock, free, doesn't cost you anything, but you do have to sign up for it. And I'm asking that everybody um, have a concordance. Uh, if you don't have one, uh, Susan and uh, Patrick can order one for you, obviously. Uh, and if you don't have one, don't decide you're not going to come. We'll figure out a way to get you uh, one, even if you can't afford it. And then I'm hoping everybody will get a study Bible. You know, that's uh, those are the Bibles that have the text, the scriptural text, but then they have what I call little cheaty notes. And I just love those little cheaty notes. And, um, 
you know, there's so many references today that you don't have to go through four years of seminary like I did and sweat and, and work. And uh, there are just so many references that, that it's all here for you to grab. And I want to be able to show you um, where those references are, what those references are, and how to use them. So we're going to start out with four weeks. Um, you know, if we need to extend it, we can. But call them or go by there and sign up. Uh, it's going to be great. And I was thinking about, I think every class but one of this I've ever taught, uh, everybody asked me to extend it. The one that didn't, it was near Christmas. Nobody was interested in <laughs> that holiday season. So we have a lot of fun. We learn a lot. Last thing, I think this is wonderful, is I give you an opportunity to teach. Everybody will get to take what we've learned and develop a little mini message uh, to give in front of everybody in the store. And uh, it's, it's great to be able to practice in front of some folks that love you and are encouraging you before you go out to the lines that want to eat you. You know what I mean? So sign up for it. And again, um, support the Harvest Christian Bookstore. They're in the uh, downtown in Noonan Square in the old Scott's Bookstore. These folks are wonderful, and we need to support them. We lost the last two bookstores. We're not going to lose this one. Let's show them that the body of Christ is there to support them. So do that, and um, uh, I just happen to think my next um, book, which is finished, we just, my husband and I are pulling our hair out trying to get it formatted to get it to the printer, but it's called Miracle Stories of Coweta County. And uh, Patrick uh, was diagnosed with cancer in three different areas. Uh, I remember the prostate was one and I think kidneys, but anyway, and the essence was he was a goner. And he didn't really respond uh, the way the doctors thought he should respond when he told them and they asked him about it and he said, I just don't receive what you're telling me. And there he is, perfectly healthy. Uh, these two are people of faith. Um, they know God, they hear from God, and they see the miraculous uh, happen all around them. So go in there and visit, introduce yourself, let them know who you are. They're just dynamite uh, folk. And uh, you can get my books there. Uh, these two, certainly, and remember I said 40 Days of Healing Devotions, and these have been selling there. I just, really, I can't tell you strongly enough. Remember when I wrote this that I was in so much pain, so much pain. I couldn't even think straight. And, you know, you can get in so much pain, you can't even study the Word, and that's where I was. And finally, I grabbed up enough strength to be able to write one devotion a day. And as I did, the pain became less and less and less until, poof, you know, it was gone. And by the way, they thought I had MS and I didn't have MS. So, um, I decided, you know, I needed to put this in book form, uh, for others. So, you know, somebody that's sick, this is the greatest thing. And it's $10 at the bookstore. You cannot beat that. And then the other thing I wanted to say about life within the veil, this is $7. You know I'm not making any money on it. And I've told them that if you want to use this as a Bible study, in the back I've got the study questions. You can have it for $5. You know I'm not making a penny on this. But this is one of this. You will have to search far and wide to find a book that takes you deeper uh, in intimacy with God. That's what this is, life within the most holy place. $7, you can get it at Noonan Health Mart or, or um, Harvest Christian Bookstore. So I'm really excited about them. I'm excited to start teaching the class again. October the 12th, that's a Saturday, uh, from 10 to noon. And uh, if you know, and, and the other thing I want to say is that um, I'm just passionate about getting folks to understand who they are in God. Uh, we've got into this pastor and congregation thing, and I just, that makes me insane. Because Peter looked out at the people of five different areas, and he said, you are a holy priesthood. You are a royal priesthood. We're the priests. We have different giftings of apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, different giftings, but we're the priesthood. And we are to make disciples. We are to be able to 
teach at the drop of a hat. And that's what I want to do is get you in a position that you understand you are a priest. You're not just little somebody sitting in a pew who happens to thumb through the hymnal once. You are a priest of the Most High God. And I want to give you the ability to be able to teach His Word. Uh, that's just a real passion of mine. And that will be at the Harvest Christian Bookstore on the court square. So excited about that. Um, want to go back to Ariana, uh, for a minute, uh, and thinking of Patrick, you know, there's this great question that we ask, why, you know, Ariana is, um, loves God. She's ordained. She's young. Her only thought is father, the rest of my life. How do I serve you? How do I please you? flow through me. And now she has a terrible form of cancer. Why? Why do people? Well, let me just say this. Um, this is my humble opinion. I think instead of asking why, we need to ask what? What good is going to come out of this? What Romans 8.28 is going to come out of this? And I'm here to tell you that we are specifically today always have been, but there's just an extra, an extra anointing for it, uh, in these times, uh, of resurrection power, uh, of God's lifing people where the doctor says, there's no hope. God says, excuse me, but there is, I'm the hope. I, in me is life. In me is resurrection life. I can take what is dead and bring it back to life. And why is that so important? Because the fact of the matter is, it's signs and wonders that cause people to turn their head upward. When somebody sees somebody's had cancer, they know it. They were dying. They know it. And all of a sudden, that cancer is gone. You ha that person has to ask, wait a minute, how did that happen? Doctors didn't do it. Doctors are saying, we don't know what happened. They have to then look at God. And I one of the things that bothered me so much when I was writing Miracle Stories from Coweta County is the lack of, of um, how can I say this, the lack of understanding in what God wants to do in and through his people in this day. We're saying, well, you know, the Muslims are taking over. How come? Well, they have a passion and a belief um, system that so much of the body of Christ don't have. I remember that when I would approach people, I say, I'm trying to write uh, some stories on miracles. What, what's happened to you that only God could have done? And they look at me like a deer in the headlights. Say, what? And yet they've, set, they've been sitting in a church pew all their life. I don't understand that. I literally could have written that book on stories of my, my own stories all by myself. So when something happens to somebody, go to the Father to just trust and pray and believe that he's going to put resurrection life on that thing. That person doesn't have to die. God can resurrect them. And then that takes your faith up to a whole different level. And that's exciting. And when we get to the point that the whole body is walking in that mindset, those Islam, those Islamists better look out because then we're going to walk in the power and the authority that Christ paid for on the cross. And he did pay for it in a terrible way because he loves us and because he has so much for us. So I love you folks. Maggie will be back next week. Don't forget, go buy the Newman, Noonan uh, Health Mart and go buy the uh, bookstore on the Noonan Square. That's Harvest Christian Bookstore. See you next week. Oh,